So Whiplash is a straight up masterpiece. So Whiplash is in like my top three favorite films of all time, my top two even, and arguably it could be number one. Uh, but it is definitely the most important film to me, and I love this movie so much, and I, I could probably talk to you about every single scene um, and for, for hours without even having a script. But I have written a bit of a script just to make sure that there is some structure to this video. So as you could guess, a large part of why I love this movie is Damien Chazelle's directing. If you go back and watch some of the earlier videos on this channel, I mentioned this guy like once a video. He's definitely one of my favourite directors and a true inspiration because he's a man with a vision. And he wants his vision realised in the best way possible with as little compromise as possible. That is something that every great director does and is very inspiring to people like me. Every single creative decision, directorial decision seems absolutely intentional and works so perfectly to complement the story while remaining organic within the context of the piece. The cinematography, for example, is terrific. The simple use of lighting and colours is genius. Lush gold and warm browns during most of the drumming scenes because it's where Neiman feels most at home, but also where the conflict is at its greatest. And these murky, disgusting greens in almost every other scene because anything that's not drumming is just not really important or palatable to our protagonist. The camera work also. I remember seeing this opening shot for the first time and thinking maybe it'll jump cut to a close up or something like that, you know, like most movies. I will always remember that I kind of knew this was something special the moment the camera slowly moved in like that instead of cutting straight to a close up. It's such a simple yet bold statement, it just works so damn well as this dynamic and inventive opening shot. And there are actually a good amount of long takes in this film, this one being one of the most overlooked in my opinion. It's very reminiscent to something from a Spielberg or an Abrams film. Very smooth and intentional moves that perfectly contrast with the intense handheld close-ups that follow. And that's one of the things that I love most about this movie, is that they really utilise contrast to hammer home the themes and emotions to the audience. The way Whiplash uses handheld I think is actually flawless. When we think of directors who are great at handheld, we usually think of Michael Mann, Catherine Bigelow, and Paul Greengrass, but they use handheld as the primary form in their films, whereas Whiplash actually uses it very sparingly. And the reason I think it's so effective is because how few and far between the handheld shots actually are. Every time it's used, it's almost like the director is telling us through the camera work that this is a big scene. There's conflict here, pay attention to this. Kind of how Fincher uses handheld, he rarely does, but when he uses it, you know something big is happening. And I absolutely love that kind of restraint and discipline put on the camera work. Before we move on, because I could talk about this film for days, let's take one quick look at the compositions and blocking as well, just real quick. Look at this scene. Chazelle knows exactly which kind of shot to use and how long to hold it for. It's arguably the most subtle long take in the film and works because it builds the tension. Everything happening in real time makes us feel just as intense and nervous as Neiman when asking out Nicole. This would then move to the more comforting cutting here and the more intense one here. So they've basically given a character arc to the camera itself which is just truly next level. Also, one final observation about the cinematography in this scene. Look how Nicole is positioned, she's trapped behind the counter and the walls in the background, while Neiman's background leads up to what could be considered the metaphorical land of opportunity. A really great visual metaphor for the characters, it might just be me overanalyzing, but mad respect if that's actually how they intended it to be. I'd also put Whiplash up there with Mad Max Fury Road as the best edited film of the decade. Tom Cross's work here is just simply astounding. It's not well edited because there are lots of cuts, but because Cross is able to maintain this constant rhythm throughout the entire film, whether it's in the slow scenes or the fast ones. The movie knows exactly when to make you feel at ease, when to make you feel shocked, when to make you feel angry, and when to make you want to stand up both triumphantly and aggressively and start cheering and punch someone in the face while also paralyzing you. The final scene features probably the best editing I've seen in any movie ever, just my opinion, but we'll get to that final scene in just a bit. So the story of Whiplash is very simple. A kid wants to be a great drummer and he's willing to do whatever it takes to get there. Simple. And Chazelle builds on this, adding so much complex realism to the story and characters. I'll get more into this in a bit, but Andrew Neiman is one of the most relatable characters I've seen across any medium. 
He's basically a metaphor for any artist. Musician, painter, filmmaker, whoever you are, I'm sure you find a small part of yourself in this character. I also love how he's not actually that likeable. There are enough moments to make you feel for him and make this guy a bit more endearing, but he's not that nice of a guy and I absolutely love that. He's aggressive, he's arrogant, but that arrogance comes from a place of genuine passion. It's something you can't fake, and it's the unfiltered nature of the character that just makes him so great. This is what real people are like. When you have such a clear goal and a clear purpose in life, it's hard to do anything but, and it's even worse when someone fucks with that, which is why the low points in the film work so beautifully, and so do the high points. Because this guy basically represents the trials and tribulations of an artist. We feel as if we are him, or at least I certainly do anyway, and that's because Chazelle's writing, and of course, the astounding performance by Miles Teller. This guy is actually awesome. He plays the character with so much purpose and confidence in himself, but there's also clearly a humble side to him that we see in the earlier scenes. He tries to be nice, he tries to be a good person, but one of the main themes here is that passion and obsession for an art form will change you. And it's not all positive, and Teller perfectly captures that aspect of the role. And one thing I think that helps even more with his casting is that Miles Teller doesn't have the look of a movie star. He just looks like a normal guy. He wears normal clothes, does normal things. He doesn't have a six pack. He doesn't have the jawline of a Greek god. He's just a guy. And that makes him a lot more relatable. Also, now that we're on the topic of clothing, notice how he wears a white shirt at the beginning and a black shirt at the end to show that this kind of innocent and passionate little kid has turned into what he desires, but that there is a clear darkness to it. See? I told you every choice was intentional. Also, we can't talk about Whiplash without talking about J.K. Simmons. This is my favourite supporting performance of all time, it's actually perfect, and I cannot see anyone else playing this role. Simmons just, he has the face of a man who means business, and the static camera placement helps to convey the menacing nature of the character. Chazelle's dialogue is also terrific, this movie has so many lines that I use in my everyday life. Some of Fletcher's iconic roasts are just brutally hilarious, and I know basically all the lines in the movie off by heart. I feel like if you truly love a film, then you could probably speak along with the characters, and that's exactly what I do with Whiplash. Also, for any of you wondering, some of my favourite Fletcher insults in the movie in no particular order are Weepy Willow Shitsack, Mr. Gay Pride of the Upper West Side, Giving a Calculator to a Retard, Pathetic Panty as Brute Fuck, Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. You actually look like a leprechaun, I think I'm gonna call you Flannery. And of course, you are a worthless, friendless, faggot lip little piece of shit whose mommy ran out on daddy when she realized he wasn't Eugene O'Neill and who is now weeping and slobbering all over my drum kit like a fucking nine year old girl. So for the final father fucking time, say it louder. So I'm sure all of you know that when you have a favourite film or when you have something that you really love, there has to be that subjective side to it. There's always something about it that you really can't explain, but you just know you love it. And that's definitely a feeling that I have for this film. But I also have a lot of gratitude for Whiplash because basically it's the movie that made me become a filmmaker. Now, as you can see, I am Asian. And of course, you know, there are all those memes out there of people saying that Asians can only be doctors or lawyers or business people, and that is partially true. And Whiplash was the film that basically gave me the confidence to go up to my parents and say, I want to make movies. Yeah, that's what I want to do, I want to make movies. Yeah. And I would not have been able to do it without Whiplash, especially that ending. I have no idea how a movie could end that perfectly. The final scene is just masterful. Every single aspect of the movie comes together for this stunning conclusion that genuinely hits you on a physical level. It is a sensation unlike anything I have ever experienced, and I'm not a big emotion guy. I've only cried in one movie ever, but oh my god did the ending hit me. It makes you feel invincible. Very rarely does a movie make you feel powerful, so thank you very much Whiplash for that. I mentioned this before, but Whiplash is pretty much a metaphor for the artists and their struggles, so of course I identified with it. For example, most of you who have a passion will have those family friends or whatever who act like they kind of know what it's like, but not really, and it can sometimes grind your gears a little bit. And this scene right here is just a slightly more extreme depiction of a situation we've all been through, and I just love the way Neiman behaves in this scene. He feels like his hard work and dedication isn't being recognised and defends it. It's what he loves, he's not going to be undermined by a bunch of people who don't really know the hardships of his journey. And that's something I've always felt, and to defend my passion is always something I've had to do. 
Now, of course, I'm a bit more restrained than Neiman, but like many of you, I will stand up for my passion even if it makes me into a slightly unlikable figure. I just love how real this actually feels. I've been through stuff like this, people I know have been through stuff like this, and Chazelle is not holding back in his writing. He's not afraid to make his character a bit of a dick. I mean, at the end of the day, all artists are arrogant pricks in one way or another, but you need that. You need that confidence and that self-trust in order to do it. And Neiman's arc is a genuinely brutal reminder of what one needs to become in order to achieve their dreams. Now, I'm sure a lot of people out there interpret Whiplash as more of a cautionary tale about what obsession can do to you, but I disagree. Like La La Land, this is very much a film for people on a similar journey to the protagonist. And it's basically saying, who has ever gotten to where they want to be by exclusively playing it safe and following the rules and being a nice guy? That's not how the world works and it's certainly not how the path to success works. That, along with Fletcher's idea of negative motivation, are things that I definitely live by in a way. I remember seeing this for the first time and watching certain scenes and thinking, wow, I've been through that, I've had that moment, and when re-watching it at different points in my life, I look at a new scene and go, yeah, I've had that feeling, I've had that moment of triumph, I've had the moments of doubt and crisis. That's the aspect of Whiplash that transcends films, that transcends filmmaking, and on top of being a really entertaining movie, this is one of very, very few films that I feel like looks straight at you in the eye and says, you know, this could be you, this could be your path, this could be your future, and this is the price that you might have to pay uh, for greatness. And it's a haunting thing to hear, but it's also such a powerful thing to hear, and that, I think, is, is why Whiplash has changed my life.